Welcome to our video about Aphrodite, the goddess of love. Her story is not as easy and straightforward as you might think. For example, being married to Aphrodite, the most beautiful woman to ever exist, might sound like a dream, right? But that wasn't the case at all. And did you know she even started a war or that this extremely beautiful woman could ever feel jealousy? It's all true, and you'll find out all these surprising facts in this video. Get ready to learn everything you need to know about the goddess of love. Enjoy. Aphrodite, known as the goddess of love, beauty and fertility, has an origin story that's as beautiful as her. Unlike other Greek gods, she was born from a violent act. In the earliest days, Gaia, the Mother Earth, and Uranus, the sky, ruled everything. Together they had the Titans, their first children, but when Uranus was cruel, Gaia worked with her son, Titan Cronus, to stop him. Cronus attacked his father and cut off his private parts, then threw them into the sea. When these parts touched the sea, the water started to bubble and foam. Then, from this foam, a grown woman of stunning beauty appeared. This woman was Aphrodite. Her birth was both shocking and incredible. It was just right for a goddess shown as caring and dangerous at the same time. Aphrodite's name is believed to come from the Greek word Aphros, which means foam. This connects nicely with the story of her birth. Her name keeps reminding everyone of how she was born from the sea foam, caused by Uranus's private parts. It's said that she was born near Paphos, a city on Cyprus Island. No one knows for sure why Cyprus was chosen as her birthplace. Some people say it's because the shape of the island looks like a woman's body. Others say it's because Cyprus has a long history of worshipping her. After she was born, Aphrodite didn't stay in the sea. With help from the west wind, Zephyrus, she came to shore riding on a shell. She was a grown woman and she was naked. This symbolized fertility and strong sexual power. A famous painting by Botticelli called The Birth of Venus shows this scene. Aphrodite played a significant part in Greek mythology. She wasn't just about good looks. As the goddess of love, beauty and new life, she was a guide to important parts of life, winning the hearts of both gods and humans. She was involved in romantic love and deep connections, putting a spotlight on the importance of bonding and families in human lives. Aphrodite was very powerful. She could create feelings of love and desire, but also distaste. She not only started relationships, she was also the guardian of marriage, helped with childbirth, and took care of the life cycle of people and gods. But Aphrodite was not always seen in a positive light. She was so beautiful that it often led to jealousy and tense situations. Many times gods and humans would argue over her and who she favored. Although her role was crucial in the lives of people and gods, Aphrodite was also closely linked with nature. This is mainly because she was born from the sea. It's interesting to note that Aphrodite's power had a big effect on social, moral and political situations in both the human and god world. By creating feelings of love and desire, she influenced how communities were bonded, how conflicts were solved, and how peaceful or tense a society was. She was both a creator of love and a cause for problems, much like in real human experiences with love and desire. That's why she was respected for bringing happiness, but people also wanted her to control her power to create conflicts. Just like other powerful beings of Olympus, Aphrodite made herself known through various symbols like doves, sparrows, swans, roses, myrtles, an apple, a pomegranate, a mirror, a girdle, and a shell. The dove is her most famous symbol. This bird stands for love and holiness and shows her kind side, it also shows her as a caring mother. The dove symbolizes peace and calm, very fitting for Aphrodite. The sparrow is also connected to Aphrodite and symbolizes a more playful side of love. The swan, another bird linked to Aphrodite, stands for grace and beauty. In many stories, Zeus, the head of the gods, took the form of a swan to get the attention of women, a trick he may have learned from Aphrodite herself. Roses and myrtles are plants often linked with Aphrodite. The beautiful rose is known worldwide as a symbol of love, directly tied to Aphrodite. The myrtle plant stands for love and long life, and people used it in weddings in ancient Greece. That's why it is connected to Aphrodite as the guardian of marriage. The apple and pomegranate are fruits tied to Aphrodite. 
They represent fertility and love. The golden apple is part of a story that started the Trojan War. The pomegranate is part of a story about Persephone, a tale all about love and desire. There are other symbols tied to Aphrodite like mirrors and a girdle. A mirror stands for beauty and physical appearance, reflecting Aphrodite's role as the goddess of beauty and physical appeal. The girdle stands for attraction and irresistible charm. It was thought to have magic power to make whoever wore it irresistible. Lastly, the seashell is a symbol of Aphrodite linked to her birth from the sea. In many artworks, especially the famous birth scene of Aphrodite, she is shown with a shell. It's often seen as a sort of vehicle for her. Aphrodite had many love stories with both gods and men. It's interesting because as she represented love and commitment, she wasn't always loyal in her own relationships. Among the gods, Aphrodite was close to Ares, the god of war. She was married to Hephaestus, who wasn't as good-looking as the other gods. Even so, she was drawn to Ares. Their love story is one of the most famous ones in Greek and Roman stories and art. Aphrodite and Ares had several children. The most well-known of Aphrodite's children is probably Eros, known as Cupid in Roman mythology, the winged god of love. He is often portrayed as a mischievous cherub who would make people fall in love by shooting them with his arrows. Some stories say Eros was the son of Aphrodite and her husband Hephaestus, the blacksmith god. However, he is also often stated to be the child of Aphrodite and Ares, the war god, with whom Aphrodite had an enduring affair. With Ares, Aphrodite had other children as well, which include Phobos, a personification of fear, Deimos, representing terror and dread, and Harmonia, a goddess of harmony and concord. Additionally, Aphrodite and Hermes, the messenger god, have a son named Hermaphroditus, a divine being who possesses both male and female traits. Those are just a few children linked to Aphrodite. So much for love, right? But the plot continues. Aphrodite was not only known to be close with Ares, Hermes and Hephaestus, she had love stories with Dionysus, the god of wine, and also with a few humans. For instance, she fell in love with Anchises, a prince of Troy, and they had a son named Aeneas. Aeneas was a hero of the Trojan War. In Roman stories, he was the first in the line of people who started Rome. She also loved Adonis, a god of plants. When Adonis died and came back to life, this showed the cycle of life and death. This is linked with Aphrodite as she had power over nature and life. Speaking of power, there's one famous story with Aphrodite that led to a big war, the Trojan War. This story is known as the Judgment of Paris. It all started during the grand wedding of Thetis, a sea nymph, and Peleus, a human king. Everyone was invited except for Eris, the goddess of chaos. Feeling left out, Eris threw a golden apple in the middle of the wedding. The apple had, to the fairest, written on it. So who was the fairest? Three goddesses, Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite, started to argue over it. Everyone turned to Zeus for the answer, but he did not want to upset anyone. Instead, Zeus passed the decision to a human man, Paris, known for being fair. The goddesses tried to convince Paris by offering him gifts. Hera promised to make him a powerful king. Athena offered wisdom, and Aphrodite promised him the most beautiful woman in the world as his wife. Paris liked Aphrodite's promise the most, so he chose her as the fairest and gave her the golden apple. That beautiful woman was Helen from Sparta, already married to Menelaus, the Greek king. But Paris took her away anyway. This act led to the big Trojan War. What's interesting is that Aphrodite, a symbol of love, acted as the spark to start a huge war. Another story with Aphrodite that stands out is about Eros and Psyche. We see a different side of Aphrodite here, one filled with jealousy, anger, and motherly love. Psyche, a human princess, was extremely beautiful so beautiful that people began to worship her instead of Aphrodite. This angered Aphrodite, and she decided to make Psyche fall in love with the ugliest creature in the world. She asked her son Eros, the god of love, to make this happen. But things didn't go the way Aphrodite planned. Eros saw Psyche and fell in love with her. He took her to his secret place. Eros visited her only at night and asked her never to look at his face. Psyche had everything she ever wanted, but was lonely and wanted to see who she was in love with. One night, Psyche, driven by curiosity, finally looked at Eros. 
She was amazed by his beauty. However, a drop of oil from her lamp fell on him and woke him up. This upset Eros and finding out she had not obeyed him, he left Psyche. After this, Psyche decided to apologize to Aphrodite. But Aphrodite gave Psyche challenging tasks. She was hoping Psyche would fail and face death. But with help from various sources, Psyche passed each task. Aphrodite, seeing how much Psyche loved Eros and the length she went to make amends, finally gave in. Aphrodite let Psyche see Eros again and made her immortal. Psyche became a goddess. The story of Aphrodite and Psyche shows Aphrodite in a new light. We see her as someone who can be angry and jealous, but also kind and fair. Aphrodite's remarkable story extends beyond Greek mythology, pervading various fields like culture, art, and literature for centuries. This has deeply shaped our understanding of love and beauty. Even today, Aphrodite remains relevant and admired. The narratives from her Greek myth find rejuvenated life and are retold in different forms. She becomes the blueprint for characters who exude beauty, charm, and occasional mischief. Did you know Aphrodite has a place in psychology too? Carl Jung, a Swiss psychiatrist, often associated Aphrodite with the anima concept, representing feminine qualities within the male psyche. Moreover, the influence of Aphrodite extends to linguistics and astronomy. Interestingly, the Roman rendition of Aphrodite, Venus, is now the name of the second brightest natural object in the night sky. Many plants and animals also bear names linked to her, but the gravitational core of Aphrodite's essence lies in her portrayal of love. She conveys love's dual nature, vigorous yet gentle, creative yet destructive, beautiful yet potentially disheartening. Her multifaceted character is a vivid reflection of these aspects. To conclude, Aphrodite's legacy holds substantial importance even today. She remains an enduring symbol of the timeless power and significance of love and beauty in our lives. Thank you for watching the divine tale of Aphrodite with us. We hope that our exploration into the intricate mythos of the goddess of love has stirred in you a deeper understanding of her role in ancient mythology and her enduring influence on our modern world. We appreciate your time and attention and look forward to welcoming you again. Until then, thank you for watching.